A very good day to you. My name is Daniel Wahome, and welcome to this edition of The Living Legends. And I'd like to go back two and a half years ago when the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation hosted Living Legends of Broadcasting from radio and television. They were fitted at an event that was well attended and was part of the Sundowner Sunset Dates. And today we speak to one of those persons who was fitted at that point. He's got stories to tell. He has been a broadcaster. He went into freelance business after leaving VOK and now is a cycling, a motorcycling enthusiast. We speak to Dawudi Kanja, who has been a voice on your radio, a face on your TV within this service. Wana Kanja. Thank you, Daniel Ohome. <laughs> It's a pleasure to let, let me just correct you there a bit. <laughs> I'm not a motorcyclist. I'm a, I'm a biker, super biker. biker. Super biker. Super biker. I mean, the way you... Uh, right? So, either way, it's still categorized by the government as a motorcycle. Right. Thank you. <laughs> but a super, a super biker. Super biker. Well, you, he's going to be telling us about that and also telling us about, you know, safety because that's something that's a concern for so many of the bikers. But like with every other edition of The Living Legends, the story starts with your early life, where you were born, and your education. Uh, Daniel was actually born many years ago. Uh, I would actually say I'm a sexagenarian, mm -hmm. slightly okay. above 60 years, in the Rift Valley, in a place we'd call actually Musho Alami. Uh, my primary education, I went to a school in a place called uh, Njoro, a little short primary school. Let alone, I came to Gilgil in a military barracks where I went to a school called Langa Langa Primary. And then let alone, I went to St. Patrick's. And uh, of course, from St. Patrick's, I went to Kualele High School, which is uh, actually under the Kenya Defense Forces. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a military academy. That's, that's where I went for my high school. And what were the things you know, that drove you into writing, broadcasting, within that time? Uh, let, let me say, broadcasting was actually earned to me since I was a kid. And I remember my mother, we used to fight all the time. You know, like she used to, to be an ayah, mm -hmm. you know, with a Zungu ayah. And we had a radio then, in those early 60s. And despite she would actually hide that transistor radio, I would actually make sure that I got it and that she would actually find me listening to that radio. And the people that I loved most, when I was a kid, I think I was about five for five years, was Joe Isaac Mamto, uh -huh. and, and the likes of Leonard Mambo, and, Le, and Alfred Mike Morethi. And then there was Joseph Kema, and there was Salim Juma. There was also Sammy Louis. And there was this lady that I loved listening to her so much, Elizabeth Akini, Amina Faki. I would actually say the perfume of them but of course, let alone when I joined Voice of Kenya those early years, I, I, I met him, them here and I was really, uh, it was actually my fish was really total manifestation of happiness. Was, I couldn't believe that I'm meeting the same people that I used to listen to when I was a small child. I mean, it's, they, they call it being stars truck. Absolutely, and absolutely. On the job, you have to deliver. Absolutely. And the thing is, for you is, that um, when you were in high school, you set up a magazine, and what was the process of getting together this magazine, and what were the stories that you were producing for Koilel? No, what happened actually, uh, that was around 1974, 75, thereabout, and uh, we did have a school magazine, and I remember there were five of us, we, we, were, we loved Kiswahili, and every mm -hmm. other time that we made sure that the principal but Baraza. I don't know whether it was a weekly Kiswahili uh, newspaper or daily. Uh -huh. I can't remember that. But we actually made sure that we had a Baraza. And uh, if I can remember those people who are actually my friends, some of them are, uh, at least one of them is deceased. One of them was Rudisi Musimi. Rudisi Musimi was kind of like our tutor amongst the, the, the five of us. Uh -huh. And then there was uh, uh, Brigdi Amacharya, who is actually retired now. There was uh, Rufus Thuku, who let alone went into s uh, journalism and let alone became the director of Permanent Music Commission. He's retired. And then there was me and with uh, Aka Kanja Daudi. They used to call me Keka. 
And then there was another fella that we haven't seen for over 45 years, uh, Bonnie Joseph Kamau. Uh, we hear he went to Embu, but that is one fella that I would like to meet mm -hmm. because he was a really curious character. We went to primary together. He bullied me a lot. <laughs> and then, of course, later on in high school, I bullied him in writing, <laughs> and uh, we, we, we eventually became friends. Yeah, that, that's my story there in Akili, Kwelele High School. And uh, like they say, um, for Buana Kamau, they say KBC Ninusu Ya Kuonana. Ninusu Ya Kuonana. So yeah. halfway, yes. you might eventually find Audi Kanja. So right. said you got together, you got the Baraza, and then how did you convince the headmaster at Koilal now that you can have this publication? No, we, 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 we actually said that we must have a publication. And I remember it was a Mr. Mutigani who is still alive. I still visit him. He lives in Kahawa West. He could be somewhere around 85 years. Once in a while, after two or three months, I usually go visit him. And it was quite agreeable. And uh, through that, now we formed that uh, writer's club. And, and because I was, they used to call me a small kanja. I, I was actually, I never participated in sports, but every single event that the school went to, I was there as a reporter. Because they remember actually when we were in school, we, people would come to be recruited when we were actually in Form 2. After Koilel High School, um, you attached re-education and coming to... Uh, after Koilel High School, um, I, I, there is one school I really wanted to go for higher. Friends come singer. Mm -hmm. Out of blues, I really loved that school. That's for, like, that for the A levels. That's for the A levels. But what happened actually when I was actually in form, form, form towards form three, uh, I was actually a person of literature, history, and still art subjects. Mm -hmm. But there's this, 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 this other bully also. You know, like every other time I was entering into a literature class, he would say, Kaka, are you, are you a girl? Why are you doing literature? So he kind of like convinced me to go science subject. And, and by science subject, I was actually very poor. So out of that, because I never did literature then, mm -hmm. I missed one or two points. So I was not able to join Friends Come Singer. And I was actually very, very disappointed. So when I came to Nairobi from the village, and of course I came staying with my cousins, my uncles here in Nairobi, I really wanted to further my education. See, like either uh, do that particular subject in literature, because I was very good in literature. Mm -hmm. I wanted to repeat that particular subject and then kind of like get a chance to, to join a, a polytechnic. Uh, say for A levels because my cousin, most of my cousins actually went to polytechnic for for A levels, but it was never paid to me. Uh, let alone I joined the extra mural studies at the University of Nairobi. I studied diploma in marketing, and, and out of that process now, I was able to get some kibaru here as an artist. Uh -huh. And uh, out of blues, I was taken to a station called uh, Radio Operations, where I started doing kind of like clerical work. I remember you say like the station used to open at six. Yes, kufungua so, kituo. Kufungua kituo. So there, there's, there's this log that that I was taught how to kind of like say you. You are a news reader. Uh, yes, I was a news reader. Yes, yes. And um, what was that process then? Knowing that you know the news had to come through wire services. Uh, the presidential press unit would bring their own story, which, was to, which was to be broadcast. And the news gathering process, what was it? The so what, what, I, what I remember about the, the newsroom at that particular time is that uh, newsroom relied so much on Kenyan news agencies. Mm -hmm. And I remember Kenyan news agency reporters who were all over the country. They would actually dispatch their news uh, to Information House uh, down near KBS where it was then during that particular time. So once it was taken to, to, to the Information House, the Kenyan news agency headquarters, then it actually be re-edited and t sent here as, as was, it, was it through Telex or something? Yeah, there was Telex, there was... <laughs> there was kind of like Telex. Mm -hmm. So what happened actually, you know, like we, we, we had editors and the translators actually in the newsroom. So those are, were the people, depending on the shift that they would actually select the kind of news that, that would be transmitted at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would be re-edited by the editors actually in the newsroom. We, as the translators, then would actually be given those news to translate, and, 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 and voila. And you remember that is the time we were using typewriters. As a news reader, there is something you put on social media after former Attorney General uh, uh, Charles Jonja died. Yes. You t there was a story that when uh, there was uh, the commission of inquiry yes. into 
you know, Charles Donjo to find out if he was working against the government of the f late former President Daniel Arap Moy. Yes. You read a news item and uh, it became a case of concern. Oh, <laughs> I, I was actually almost sacked. And this is the same Jonjo who, who, who through my, my friend Mohammed Juman Jaguna, who was actually my supervisor. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started reading news, uh, Jonjo, I think, didn't like the name Kanja. And then he would actually ask, who is this? Who allowed that son of Warolu Kanja to read news? Oh, because Warolu Kanja had just because, been incarcerated. Uh, yeah, incarcerated, At somewhere mm -hmm. in Kingongo. Yes. And uh, Mohammed Njuguna, of course, actually, we would actually intercede on my behalf. And another news editor, Ms. Mangoka, would say, you know, Daudi Kanja is not related to Warolu Kanja. So the commission of inquiry about Jonjo came in. And I remember I was picked up at, at, at my house in Huruma Flats, somewhere around four-ish. Mm -hmm because that is the time that the newsreader were picked up. And I came, that is the time that we were reading news at six. I was actually doing news in Kiswahili, Habari. Mm -hmm. And then of course you do, do Magazitini, and then news at seven, Magazitini, and then mm -hmm. news at nine. And uh, that time I was in top notch. I was actually in my epitome best. I read news and out of blues, I don't know where I got the name Mogane. You know, every single item. You know, professionally supposed to be two names in his yes. reading. But from 6 a.m., when reading the news bulletin, wherever there was Jonjo, I was adding Charles Mogane Jonjo. Magazitini, Charles Mogane Jonjo. Seven, Magazitini. 9 a.m., Charles Mogane Jonjo. Mm -hmm. You know, and happened to you, I was very happy. Yes. So when I, when I had just gone through the nine... Uh, uh, o'clock news bulletin. I mean, out of the studio, I, I saw a, a whole pathion of uh, top notch managers here, uh, <laughs> led by Nyamboki. And I was wondering now, these people, what, what's up? I mean, they want to promote me, man. I was do doing those things very nicely. <laughs> and I remember Nyamboki, Nyamboki was, there was actually Hamani Gambi, who was actually the deputy mm -hmm. chief news editor, and there was, there was Mangoka the chief news editor, and they tell me, my book, keep, Kanja, bring that bulletin. And then he, you know, I'm just mute. Mm. He picked up the bulletin. Follow me. Then now we are following Nyamboki uh, to the director's office. And we, we entered into the director's office, and I heard him say, uh, there, there was some red phone there, and I think the big man had called. Eh? Mm -hmm. And I heard him, uh, Yamoki says, uh, Your Excellency, there is no name Mugane. Uh, I had some boy, Nayuji na metua wabi, na Mugane, ni mutua mbaya mesiviwa. So me, I never spoke. And uh, what happened is actually they threw me out of the office. I was actually interdicted for about, I think, six months. I never read news. How I came again onto the roster, I can't remember. But I never touched bullet for six months. And uh, that was it. Because Mogani, I think, to the powers that be, I mean, he was kind of like uh, a nemesis at a particular mm -hmm. time, politically. So why, why does this uh, young man call Mogani the appraised one, you know? Mm -hmm. So oh. that's how my cookie crumbled then. <laughs> that was life then. And also <laughs> now, let's move on to the sports desk. Yes. And set up in 85. Yes. And within two years, you had to handle what was the biggest event to ever come to Kenya? The fourth All-Africa Games. Oh, the fourth Af All-Africa Games. Oh, you, you know, our boss then was actually Harry Amol, who deceased. Uh -huh. he, was, he was actually into sports so much. Because he's the one who did a lot of campaign for that particular program, or, you know, desk to be, uh -huh. to be initiated. And then, uh, the, 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 the biggest event that we covered then was the All-Africa Games. And I loved, pro I loved boxing. You know, I, was, I became kind of like the anchor person for boxing. I, there's no single country that I've, the, the boxing team that went, I didn't go. We went to Uganda, we, we, we went to Germany. I remember we went even to UK and even the Far East in Bangkok. For the King's Cup. For the King's Cup. And I, I, so when it comes now to, to the All Africa Games, uh, I was actually in charge, despite my young age then, I was actually in charge of uh, both television and radio for commentaries. You can imagine it's me who recruited my previous mentor, Alfred Mike Morethi, uh -huh. to come, we, we do the, 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 the commentary with him. And it went on very well because I remember boxing uh, was one of the major events in this country, apart from football. And I remember uh, in the finals of the Africa Games, 
I think Kenya was able to clinch nine gold medals. Ten of the was 12. Was it ten? Ten of the twelve. <laughs> it's a long time ago. That, that was is, still young. That is a hit squad. It was a hit squad. <laughs> and from that, you know, eventually, um, something else that was huge on KBC yes, at, at yes. that point was darts. The darts, yes. And uh, you had to fill in the shoes of uh, Tido Muhando. Tido Muhando, yes. Uh, for the... Uh, festival of Darts absolutely. with uh, David Drontana. Uh, absolutely. I had actually gotten out of uh, uh, KBC then because it was a parastato in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, then I decided I, I should actually start doing broadcasting in f on, on freelance basis. So Tito Mohando, my friend, another mentor, uh, g goes to BBC. And out of blues, I, I was picked up to do his programs. Well, another sport that you do love is rallying. And you yes. even did this in your freelance yes. days. Yes, yes, I did. What has that journey been? Because you've seen the wild five-day safari yes. move into the super special, uh, super spe uh, special format yes. in the 90s till 2002. Yes, yes. And you were part of our commentary team last well, I was actually part of that uh, commentary. I, I did a lot of field commentaries, you know, like from Cherangani, from Churu Hills, all the way from Mombasa. We'd even go up all the way to Western Kenya. And uh, we'd actually make sure those, those, those particular... Uh, shots were brought to for transmission mm -hmm. and I love motorsport I love motorsport and, and uh, eventually of course now and you know motorsport if I can give you the history of motorsport it's kind of like a European thing yes because with the invention of the combustion engine in the 1802 in France you know like by the year 1894 they had started those uh, road races so WRC of course now uh, the safari rally was actually incorporated in 1973. <clears throat> and, uh, when I was a small kid, a small boy, Hukomwisho Alami, and there was that Coronation Safari and East African Safari, we never slept until cars started passing somewhere around 3 a.m. I still love sports, and that's why I do super bikes. Anything uh -huh. speed. Well, anything to do with speed, and I would like to bring in, and it's about <clears throat> safety. <clears throat> you do super bikes. Yes. But I want to simply say it's Two wheels run by a motor. Yes. Either it be a super bike. Yes. It be an ordinary motorcycle or a border border. Right. Or even a courier right. motorcycle. Right. What's your push for safety in this sector? So we, we, we have this uh, this group in you know, in actually in, in the Facebook, uh, they start uh, African uh, motorcycle something. So there is some certain group of y y youngsters there who do a lot of campaign for for safety. Because when, 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 I, when I see some of the border borders ride, I really sympathize with them. Because the, the, most of the time they are riding opposite direction. And they don't understand this is a vehicular and anything can happen. And it's actually very important. It doesn't matter whether you're going to buy milk, and you have your bike, make sure that you have your helmet. And some of those things that protect the elbows and the knees. Or dress nicely. Like, like I've just come riding on my bike. Uh, this, this could be a jean, but if you touch here, but a Daniel, mm -hmm. this, uh, this is a padded jean, you know? Just, just touch. Yes. This, this, this is a padded, Actually, yes. it's a padded jean. Yes, your jeans are and, and, fully and, protected. Uh, very fully pro protected because it's like anything can happen. So make sure that every other time you're riding, whether it's border border, you've put on your helmet, you've put on your, your stuff, the gloves, and, and you put on your jacket for total protection because now become, this becomes the, the body of the vehicular uh, as, as you move along uh, to whatever destination that you'll be doing. All right. Now, as we come to a close. Right. Nilikuwa msomaji wa habari. Nilikuwa msomaji wa habari, but. Haya. Simulipatia kazi, bwana. Sijazeeka sana. Sijui lakini. Niko na taarifa hapo. Sina macho wana mazuri bwana. Unajua sasa nishazeeka mawani sijui itakuwaje. Haya. Hiyo taarifa. Naam. Those are the mm. Your tarifa Nam. ya saa kumi. Ilisomo na Asha Hamisi. <laughs> Radio Taifa. Mm. So the 4 p.m. bulletin yes. on Radio Taifa today. I've yes. picked the Muktasari. Muktasari. And uh, the top two stories. Mm -hmm. So, tukifunga, mm -hmm. some tarifa ya habari. Habari kamili. Serikali imetua wanyongeza asimi ya kuminambili karika vimuango vya chini ya zaidi vya mishahara kufatia malamishi ya wajiri yeti hawana uwezo kulipa mishahara mpia. Serikali kupitia kwa wizara ya Leiba inasema ilikuwa imeshauriana na wadau mbali mbali kabla ya rais kutoa tangazo hilo wakati wa maadhimisho ya sherehe za siku kuu ya wafanyakazi. Tetesi hizo zinafuatia ripoti ya chama cha wajiri wa sekta ya kilimo IAEA 
iliashiria kwamba wakulima wameanza kufua wafute kazi wafanye kazi katika juhudi za kutimiza maagizo ya serikali hayo yalifichuliwa wakati wa mkutano wa mwaka 59 na chama hicho AGM uliyofanyika huko na Ivasha na kuhusu na waziri wa leba eh, Simon Shilugoe Shilugoe likiri kwamba waajiri hawaja jinu sui pasavyo kufuatia janga la ugonjwa wa COVID-19 lakini yakasema kwamba mara ya mwisho kwa viwango vya chini vya mishahara kuongezwa ilikuwa mwaka wa 2018 Mwenyekiti wa chama cha waajiri wa sekta ya kilimo AEA Wilson Odoyo alisema baadhi wa wakulima wameamua kuasima mishe kazi wafanye kazi hatu ambayo walisema huenda ikasababisha vigomo na kupotea kwa nafasi za ajira Msaidizi Commissioner wa County katika eneo la Naivasha Videli Sibabu aliwahakikishia wakulima na pia wafanye kazi hao kuhusu usalama wakati wa kipindi cha uchaguzi Well Well done. I think you still got it because now I haven't finished. You haven't finished? Yeah, there's another bullet in here. Story. It's yeah. called Wanjigi. Ah yeah, to so many. So, mfanye biashara Jimmy Wanjigi amesema ataelekea kwenye mahakama kuu kuwasilisha rufaa yake dhidi ya hatua ya kamati ya kusuluhisha mizozo ya tume huria uchaguzi na uratibu wa mipaka huko nchini IBC kudumisha uamuzi wa ali wa kumzuia kuwa ni ya urais kwa niangalie TV kidogo mm. hiyo ni kama TV eh uh -huh. Wanjigi alikuwa ametafuta mwingili wa kamati hiyo ili kubatilisha uamuzi wa mwenyekiti wa ABC wa Fule Chipkati na kuto wa kuto mwidhinisha katika kudumisha uamuzi huo George Murugo aliyeongoza kikao cha jopo lililosikiliza kesi hiyo jana usiku alisema Chipkati hakukosea hata kidogo kwa vile mwaniaji huyo alikosa kutimiza masharti ya usajili katika muda uliowekwa hata hivyo ndio unatia post kidogo hata hivyo <laughs> wanjigi ameapa kupinga uamuzi huo katika mahakama kuu ameapa eh, kupinga samahani najua ukikosa kidogo unasema eh, eh, samahani hata hivyo wanjigi ameapa kupinga uamuzi huo katika mahakama kuu wakili wake wili sotino anadai kama hiyo ilifafanua vibaya sheria fa ya mwaniaji rais wa chama cha third we alliance ekuru au kotspia ilitupiliwa mbali jana usiku japo hilo ilidumisha uamuzi wa kumzuia kushiriki katika kinyanganyiro cha urais ikisema alishindwa kuwasilisha shahada yake ya degree na pia sahihi za wafuasi elfu mbili kutoka jumla ya kati ya kaunti 24 Zahumun chini mwisho wa habari Well done Thank still you. got it and that is the, uh, yeah. the unrehearsed news I don't, I don't rehearse news One more thing mm. have you ever been called Patrick Njiro's brother Many a times many a times we, we call each other brother mm. and, and I'm the one actually who who beat that young man he had come from some place uh, in the slopes of Mount Kenya called Kivuti mm -hmm. so I was kind of like Charlie I'm tying Nairobi so I'm the one who showed him around or those pretending also I'm a Nairobian and I come from the village or the village you know when I, I my first bike I bought after one year and I remember my mother never talked to me for about two years or three years cuz I was telling her this bike of mine I'm spending 4000 that was I think early early 80s and if she was telling me why can't you buy some shamba here kuna shamba inakatwa 1500 uwe na shamba I told her no I love bikes But later on of course later on we bought some shambas but that was my passion oh. when my friend John Obongo because we got employed at the same time another gentleman called Laru Ambua and Ike Mlembo when the, the, the first one year suddenly they bought music systems <laughs> me, me, me I bought a bike <laughs> I bought a motorbike and we still laugh about it thank you very much uh, thank you so Daudi much. Kanja yes, yes. yes you have been watching yes. an edition of the living legends with Daudi Kanja he's been a broadcaster and he has been in you know as a freelance as an employee of the voice of Kenya when transitioned to KBC he left and he went freelance and still is a superbike enthusiast and calls for proper road safety by those who ride on motorized two wheels Thank you very much Daudi Kanja. Thank you so very much. Well, Thank my name is Daniel Wahome. Keep it KBC Channel 1.